Hi guys, I am going to do a video. I just realized I don't have my book. Do I have my book? Hang on, I'm starting the video and already running away from the screen. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. So I wasn't planning on doing a video today. I think I say that every time I come on. I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but I came home and I realized I had all these fresh blueberries in the fridge that I wanted to use up. And what I love to do when I have a lot of berries, either I'm baking, which I did a lot of baking uh, earlier this week, so I don't wanna bake again, um, but I'm gonna make some jam, some berry jam that's sugar-free. And I wanna show you how to make it. And I also wanna show you to you what you can use that's in your fridge and in your pantry, because I have like the template for this recipe. It's actually from Plant Part Family. So I know I've been talking about the new book a lot, Dreams Kind Kitchen. But this jam recipe is from Plant Park Families, and I'm going to, where is it? And just try to get to the recipe to show you. I just posted it on my page, too, so uh, the recipe is there, and I was starting to share it up, and then I thought, I'm going to do the video. I'm just going to hop on and do the video. So there's the recipe. It's um, here. It's made with blueberries, but you can really use any berries in this recipe. So let me know, have you ever made jam? Because it feels like it's, okay, so when I grew up, my mom always made jam and she'd make different like marmalade. She used to make a pumpkin marmalade and that was always really popular. I have to ask her what she made, what she used in that recipe and try to come up with something similar without sugar. Yeah, she made a pumpkin marmalade every year. I'm just remembering that. And I didn't ever want to make jam because I didn't want to get into the, uh, like the sanitation of the jars and boiling the jars and then keeping it in the pantry for months and months. I just didn't want to do that. I don't know. It's, it just kind of freaked me out and seemed like a lot of work. So when I make jam, I make smaller batches and I keep some in the fridge, but then I put some in the freezer. And to me, then that kind of skips that step of having to sanitize the jars and keep it in the pantry. And it keeps just as well in the freezer in, you know, any kind of container like, reusing whatever containers you have to freeze. Um, so now I make this jam and I use all kinds of things to make it. So have you ever made jam? And if you do, what kind do you make? And also, do you do that? Do you do that? Um, one of my neighbors, I was talking to my neighbor the other day and she does all this canning. I'm like, wow, I have never moving my mat. I have one of those soft mats under my feet. I've never canned a thing. So I feel like, <laughs> you know, a little in inexperienced in some ways that, you know, I've written cookbooks and done all of this work, but I've never canned and I've never, I'm not one that does pickling and I've never done like the sanitation of jars. I remember my mom having like the big pot of water and sanitizing all those mason jars and the lids, right? So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with this jam. And I, I just closed up the recipe, heavens. Okay, hang on guys, I'm getting it. So chime in and let me know, have you made jam what kind of jam do you make have you ever heard of pumpkin marmalade have you ever heard of that um let's see okay and i did put this recipe in the description link as well so it's up there but it's also on my page and it's on my site and it's in the book <laughs> it's everywhere the recipe is everywhere um okay so i'm going to kind of eyeball it the recipe is about three and a half cups of berries and the sweetness comes from dates, but I'm almost out of dates and I'll explain why in a moment. And a little bit of chia seed and mm, the magic is a little lemon zest mm -mm -mm, in the recipe. Also, what else is magic in this recipe is vanilla powder. Like, oh my gosh, it's so good in the recipe. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I didn't add the link to the vanilla powder. The brand I use is Kiva but there's other brands on Amazon and I was looking for this one on Amazon the other day and I didn't see it. So I'll dig up a link after and share it. I do have this on my site. If you go to my site, greenaburton.com and just search vanilla powder, you'll find information on vanilla powder. It's the whole vanilla bean, vanilla bean ground up and it's magical. It's like, ha ha ha. Actually, this one's going a little stale. It's not as intense in flavor and smell as it used to be. So I'm going to get to the recipe and introduce the magic after. Hi, Denise. She has never made jam. Okay, so like we're newbies here, right? There's a lot of things. I also don't bake bread, so I'm just putting that out there. Like 
there's a lot of stuff I don't know and don't do. Uh, so maybe in time, I will learn to do those things. But you know, we all are on journeys with cooking and eating. And I'm certainly not an expert in everything. You can't be an expert in everything, right? Um, getting some water because I'm talking so much. So let's get to the recipe. I'm going to put the camera down and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm roughly going to measure up. I'm going to double the recipe and my pot's a little small, but I don't want to use my big pot because I might be using it for something else. So basically I will have overflowing jam, something like that. <laughs> so part of the reason I want to use these berries is I bought these gorgeous organic blueberries and they look gorgeous and they are nice, but they're not super sweet. You know how sometimes you buy batches of blueberries and they're not the sweetest. And this is one of those batches. They're not super sweet. Uh, so they're kind of flavorful, but I like blueberries to be really sweet, right? Like really sweet, like those big, big, big blueberries, like big eyes that are really sweet. Kathy's never made jam before. Awesome. And you're going whole food plant-based. Nice to hear from you, Kathy. Welcome to the <laughs> world of whole food plant-based. And see, we all can learn together. So I have this funny blueberry story when I was a kid. I love food as a kid, like always, I've always loved food. I was a bit of a junk food junkie as a kid. And um, that's a story for another day. I was a real junk food junkie and I was quite, not quite heavy, but I was heavy as a child. And so people kind of are surprised to hear that now because I know I'm lean now, but I wasn't always. Uh, and I ate a lot of junk food and I really found solace in food. My dad died when I was 11 and when he passed away I turned to food even more and so um yeah I just food was like a comfort and still is and I loved it but I I think all of I I'm going into a long long story but I talk about that in Drina's Kind Kitchen too like how I came to this place of eating and um it started in that place that wasn't so great right like not very healthy food habits, but has developed into a beautiful place now. Um, so anyhow, my mom, we used to pick blueberries as kids, right? And in Newfoundland, they grew very wild in areas. And Newfoundland is not a big uh, warm climate for crops. So blueberries grow very abundantly wild and we'd go out and pick them. And my mom had them ready for like baking a pie or something. And I was out eating them, right? She told us not to eat them. And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good part of my, you know, I was eating some healthy food there, but I'd also eat lots of other stuff. Anyhow, I was eating the blueberries. And then, you know, we had six girls in a family and we had one main bathroom, right? Not like nowadays where you have like four bathrooms in a house. We had one main bathroom. So everyone was in the bathroom all together at different times. So she was in there like doing my sister's hair, cutting her hair, I think. And I went in and I sat on the bathtub and... I, I talked a little bit. She said, Drina, were you eating the blueberries? And I said, no. And she could see it like all over my teeth, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> she remembers that to this day. And I do too. Anyhow, blueberries are a telltale sign, right? You always know when you're eating them, especially when they're cooked like in a jam or a pie. So back to the berries. So I've got four cups in there right now. I'm going to add some other things. Over the summer... I was freezing like grapes. Here I go, lifting the camera again, freezing grapes for the kids or for my youngest to eat. And especially when I found I had a lot of them and they were just about to go a bit soft, I'd freeze them. So I'm adding those because they're not getting eaten now. And I want to get them out of the freezer and they're so sweet. So grapes are awesome to add to a jam like this. Just got to make sure I get those bits of stems out because they're so sweet and they will replace the sugar. And you can chop them, but when they're a little smallish, like these are not that big, then you don't need to chop them. You can just pop them right in and they'll break down just like the blueberries. But that's only about a half a cup. So I'm also going to add, hang on, I got something in the freezer. dig around for this so one day my daughter my older daughter charlotte she found um purple dragon fruit at 
one of our local stores and it was already cut and packaged and she kind of bought it on an impulse, but then didn't eat it. And I didn't want it to go bad. So I do what we always do, pop it in the freezer. So I just thought today this would be an excellent thing to add because it's so sweet and look at the gorgeous color. Oh, it's not too hard to chop. So I'm going to chop this into a few pieces. So this is sometimes called, uh, I think it's called pitaya, pitaya. And it's, look at the color of that. Isn't that just stunning? I don't know. Like nature offers us all the beautiful foods. And for someone who doesn't like, say, blueberries or a lot of purple foods, this might be a nice option to get that color into your diet. This is a lot easier to cut than I thought. I thought it was going to be really, really frozen and and almost dangerous to cut but it's not bad now i'm just cutting it a little bit because it's going to break down i don't worry too much i mean i make jams and i find i just like to make them pretty rustic and not fuss about it too much because as i always say martha is not coming for lunch or dinner or any other time so that's in and i'm one cup shy so i've got some frozen strawberries here and I think I'm going to add some of those. And these are not ones we got that were at like farmer's market or anything. These are just, we got at Costco, but they're organic frozen berries. That's good. And I'm going to pop those in. So you can see I'm just adding a big mix of berries here. Where I just throw, do you see how I throw things when I cook? Where's the top? I just have the top to those berries. Oh my gosh. Okay didn't put it in the pot, did I? I don't think so. Someone point out to me where I put the top to those berries. Oh my heavens. Okay, I'll find it later. And so berries are generally pretty sweet, but sometimes they're a bit tart, like these blueberries. So to add some sweetness for each batch of this, like three cups of berries, we're adding um, a half a cup of dates. However, I have lost my dates and I only have a couple left. I'll say I lost them. I actually been eating them in the night. I've been loving to eat, eating dates in the night, like just, just put a tiny bit of like nut butter in them and eat them. I really, really enjoy that, but I'm really low on dates and I want to save those for tonight. <laughs> so I'm going to add some other dried fruit instead. And you can do that. You can use other dried fruits. So raisins are very, very sweet. So I'm going to use some raisins. And dates are, you know, super great. And the other thing about adding dried fruit, and I have this big bag of dried peaches that I bought online, and I haven't been using a lot, so I'm going to add some of those. And the other thing about, as I was saying, adding dried fruit, especially fruit like dates, raisins, and these dried peaches, which are really sweet. Dried man I also have dried mango. I might add some dried mango. As you can see, it's kind of a... Uh, kitchen soup type of jam. It's not, um, you know, just berries. I'm just kind of adding stuff as I feel willy nilly, but Hey, that's what, you know, cooking should be right. Using up what you have, unless you're doing baking and you need specific measurements of things. And you're making them like a jam or a soup. Um, it's really about using what you have and adding the flavors that you want. So that's about a cup. So I didn't finish my sentence. The great thing about using dried fruit, in addition to the sweetness, is that as this, I'm going to use up the rest of it here, as this bubbles and begins to simmer, the juices from the berries, as the juices get released, the dried fruit soaks up that, that juice. So, you know, when you typically make jam, there's a lot of juice. And years ago, you would add, I think they added pectin. I'm not sure, but you would add certain things to help um thicken the jam and i use the dry fruit because like i said as this fruit boils and simmers and the liquids start to come out then the dried fruit picks it up and plumps up thickens the jam add in sweetness boom 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 win win and then i also add a tiny bit as the simmers not right away but as it gets liquidy and simmers um I then add a little bit of ground chia seed. Oh, I found more dates. There they are. Dang. 
how did I do that? Okay, I'm going to add a few more of these dates since I don't need to save them for my nighttime snack now. <laughs> um, I'm going to just add some of these because I do like the dates in the jam because they're so, so sweet. And just chop them up. And I always buy pitted dates. It saves me the step of of um, pitting them. And this particular brand of dates is very dry. There's another brand I get that are really nice and soft and moist, and I prefer those. So I'm putting this right on the stove um, and it has to simmer for about 10 minutes. And then uh, after that, so you have to bring it to a boil, like bring it up to a bubble first with, and I put a pinch of sea salt in there too. And the reason I do that is to add one, where's my salt? I'm really disorganized here today, guys, because I wasn't planning. Um, to add that tiny bit of salt helps draw out the moisture. You don't have to have it, but also it kind of heightens the sweetness. Oh, every time you add just a little bit of salt to a sweet recipe, not a lot, just a pinch or two, it brings up the, the flavor. So I'm getting this on the stove, but look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Look, look at the colors in there. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to get this on the stove and bring it over a medium heat, medium, medium low, roughly. Do I have another wasp in here? No. And allow it to come to a low bubble and let that simmer for about 10 minutes. And I'm not going to continue to do the video while it's simmering because it's going to take a while. But um, after that time, then I add the chia, just a little bit of chia seed. I think it's a tea, half a teaspoon. No, two teaspoons. I do have to check my recipe. Two teaspoons of ground chia seed. And then if there's any extra juices, that soaks that up and thickens the jam. And you don't need to add anything else to thicken it. Plus you're getting in that chia seeds, which are really rich in omega fatty acids and also good you know, for lots of other nutritional properties, high in fiber. Um, seeds are very healthy. We tend to utilize nuts a lot more in our diets. Um, I think in like our Western culture, we use nuts a lot more than seeds like almonds, cashews, uh, and peanuts are a tree nut, are not a tree nut, but you know, in that sort of category of snacking and using nut butters, we use nuts a lot more than seeds and seeds are exceptionally healthy. Um, in not that nuts aren't, but seeds offer other nutritional properties that sometimes nuts don't. So it's nice to have both in your diet and not just rely on nuts. And seeds tend to be really high in protein. Pumpkin seeds are really high in protein. So if that's something that you want to make sure you're getting, you know, a little boost of protein, pumpkin seeds are awesome for that. So I've gone off tangent a little bit, but hey, any of you who are with me for a while, you know, that's what I do. Um, so then that's going to bubble up, as I said, and then we're going to add the chia seed and a little lemon zest. And that lemon zest, I'm telling you guys, you could also use orange zest, zest, preferably organic. We don't always have organic lemons on hand, but generally I like to use organic for zesting. Um, you could also do lime, but orange or lemon is so nice. It's like anytime you add lemon zest or juice to a recipe, Again, it's almost like salt, it kind of perks everything up. Like, hmm, wow, what's that in there? And so that's what that little bit of lemon zest will do. So if you're making this at home, definitely try it with some lemon zest. And then that's it. And you let it um, then cool. And if it needs more thickening, you could always simmer it for a little bit longer on a low heat, just allow all those juices to bubble down and thicken and thicken. Um, and really you shouldn't need too much um, extra of anything, the chia seed or anything else, because you're, we're not adding liquid to the jam. I don't add water because I want the natural juices to come out and for the dried fruit to absorb it, chia seed to absorb it. And then it's thickened and that's it. So you don't need to add water and you don't need to add any sweetener other than the dried fruit. If you want to add a little sweetener, if you feel like it's too tart and you don't want to use more dried fruit, um, just add a little bit of date syrup or maple syrup, like just you know, a couple of teaspoons. And I'm seeing some comments come in. Kathy's saying she makes, oh, she made freezer jam before going. Sorry, I misread your comment. And um, yeah, 
Grapes are a great add, Laura, and it's only something I just kind of want. I have them in the freezer, and why not add them? They're so sweet. And <laughs> yeah, Laura, I say that all the time. Martha's not coming, guys. If you see my house today, you know she's not coming. Um, and yeah, I'm glad. I'm seeing your comments. I'll, I'll reply after. So I'm glad some of you are excited to try the jam. Like I said, that's the berry recipe, and it's on my blog. The link is in the description. But really, you could try this with any fruit, right? You could make it with um, peaches and nectarines and add dried apricots. Delicious. I've added dry, dried apricots before. And I would add dried apricots instead of dates just for the color, right, to kind of keep a brighter color in the jam, making it with apricots or making it with nectarines or peaches. Um, yeah, and all kinds of berry combinations, right? So I hope you like it and try it. And I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, I'm probably going to be posting through the weekend anyways. But if you're not online, then wishing you a bright and beautiful weekend. And I have to go clean up my mess now. And, you know, vacuum and do laundry and mm, mm, all that fun stuff. Okay. I would rather stay on and cook with you guys for hours. That's far more interesting, fun to me. But um yeah, you know, I say to my youngest when she complains about like doing math or something, I'm like, "Hun, you know, we all have things that we love to do and all have things that we don't love to do, but we have to do all of them. Sometimes we have to do the things we don't love to do. For instance, I don't like cleaning the bathrooms, but I do it. <laughs> so, you know, we can't always do everything that we want to do all day long. It's uh, part of the package, right? So on to do some of the things that I don't love to do as much as cooking and sharing with you. So off I go. Have a beautiful day. Blessings to y'all guys. See ya.